Hello, friends, and welcome back to Dayton Dies. I'm not dead quite yet, and neither are you, apparently, which is something that we should both be grateful for. We are reaching the end of this series, and I am so excited to see how it goes. Only a few more parts left, but we've got many dangers between here and there. How do Carl, Nick, and Pete make it out when the fog is chasing them around, threatening to dissolve everything? <laughs> I guess their little vacuum machines might work, but it seems a bit like a gamble. You kind of just have to trust that the military guys know what they're talking about, which isn't always the case in my experience. <laughs> but we'll just have to dive on into this thing and see how it goes today. We've seen some weird things on the road. Part 37. Written by user Roseblack2222. Narrated by Brandon Dayton. Things got a little awkward last week. Y'all remember how I said I was going to take a bubble bath? Well, I did, but I kind of forgot to lock the door. Nick walked in on me while I was soaking. Our exchange went something like this. Oh, shit. Sorry, Pete. I didn't know you were... Wait, are those toys? A rubber duck, a toy boat, and a pool noodle were all in the tub with me. I also had one of those Spider-Man figures that grow when you soak them in water. Nick and I just stared at each other for a while. They make bath time more fun. Sure. Unless you're older than eight. What do you want? I I'm trying to relax here. Hey, I'm not judging. I needed to take a leak, but I guess I'll just use the bathroom downstairs. Oh, sorry. All the training this week has me really stressed. No biggie. I feel you on that one. Anyway, I'm going to leave now. It's starting to feel awkward. <laughs> I gave him a backhanded wave and he left, closing the door behind him. Then I enjoyed another hour of my relaxation. Next time, uh, I'm locking the door. I don't really have anything new to share in regards to our training. We've still just been ice swimming. Well, there's actually one thing different that we've been doing. In addition to the usual laps, we've also taken to diving. In particular, we've been playing a game where Carl tosses something into the water and we have to locate it as quickly as we can. I suppose this has helped my lightning skills. Damn, is it cold though? I normally do enjoy it, however, there is a limit. Anyway, now that I got all that off my chest, back to where I left off in the last post. Wait, and don't shoot! Someone in a panicky voice pleaded, cowering with his arms raised. Damn it, Stevenson! Mickey scolded as we lowered our weapons. What in God's name were you thinking? We could have killed you just now. You're right. My apologies. I, I'm not thinking clearly right now. Well then, you need to start doing that. Why did you even come out here anyways? I, I figured I might be safer with you guys. In case the fog decides to come back here. <laughs> Steven was extremely fidgety. Clearly, this man wasn't used to things being this bad. Safer? You aren't even in any protective gear. I know, but I could still run like hell, though, if I saw it. How about you run like hell upstairs instead? The last thing we need right now is dead weight. He agreed and left. And then we got our hunt for the fog underway. Fun fact, I'm actually part Native American from my mom's side. Of course... You probably wouldn't be able to deduce that by looking at me. To be honest, I've never really given a shit about ancestry or anything like that. I rarely even share that information about myself unless I feel it's relevant. You've probably been wondering why I'm bringing all this up then. Well, it's because this incident got me thinking more deeply. I felt a sort of kinship with those ancient hunter-gatherers. I know they must have felt the same way I did at the time when they were on their hunts. I can picture them, even now, braving the wilderness armed with only a bow or a spear, knowing full well that they might not come back. That's how I felt as we were searching the area. The fog was the most dangerous thing that we had ever faced directly. One touch, one kill. That was the name of the game here. I think I hear something, Carl spoke. He pointed in the direction it was coming from. Our boots squeaked against the floor as we all started running towards it. Something I haven't mentioned is the fact that I have pretty big feet. Unfortunately for me, the boots that I was wearing 
weren't exactly my size. I had to curl my toes in order to make my feet fit. I was dreading the blisters that I was going to find after this was all over. All I could try and do was block out my discomfort by focusing on the task at hand. Speaking of which, we finally managed to locate the fog. We found it, hovering high above us. I think it might have found a crack that it was trying to slip through. Stevenson wasn't kidding when he said that it had grown. This thing was colossal now, covering the entire ceiling. Are these still gonna work on it? Nick asked nervously, referring to the vortexes. I was wondering the same thing. If they didn't, plan B would be to get the fuck out, and then think of something else, I guess. They should, Mickey answered. We'll have to hit it with everything we've got, though. It took notice of us. Now that it was bigger, I could make out more features of it. There was a face. It was smooth, almost mannequin-like. The eyes, nose, and mouth almost seemed to phase in and out of existence. It gave us a look of pure anger and hunger. There was also this deep malice to its expression. I felt as if we could be swallowed at any moment. Even if I wasn't nervous before, I sure as shit was now. It began convulsing. Parts of it were rapidly pulsing and writhing. Get out of the way, Mickey barked. The fog shot out a stream of coppery-colored liquid. We leaped out of the way, narrowly avoiding it. Upon hitting the back wall, it started burning through it. That was when the stakes ramped up. There was a strong chance that it could escape now if we managed to fail. Why aren't we firing on it yet? I asked. It's not close enough, Mickey answered. We need to close the distance between us. How? With a battle cry, Mickey charged forward. I thought he was insane. Powering on his weapon, he aimed his hose at the fog. The suction was enough to mobilize it. Unfortunately, it was unable to pull it down. Come on, you bastard! He grunted, yanking the hose. We went to help him, and this only ended up resulting in a game of tug-of-war. It got ready to shoot out more of that liquid at us, giving us no choice other than to relent. I jumped back as the stuff nearly landed on my feet. Then we ran, hiding behind one of the walls. Is it flammable? I inquired of Mickey. Are you crazy? They'd be like setting off a bomb in here. That's why we never bothered trying that. Hear me out. If we can light up parts of the area, maybe we can get it to lower itself. Mickey considered my idea. That does sound a little risky, but I think we can manage it. We'll have to get it done quick, though. The fog was so large that it rubbed against the walls, which left condensation on them. Mickey smoked and carried some matches on him. It was a simple matter of using one of them to light the liquid on the walls. The plan actually went well for about the first two minutes. What we didn't count on was how flammable that stuff turned out to be. The area was set ablaze in about a split second. It's a miracle that the fog was able to move in time to avoid the fire. Otherwise, we would have all been blown sky high. Despite the admittedly major setback, the plan did technically work, and the fog was forced to lower itself. The problem now was trying to capture it while there was a fucking raging inferno going on. Our vortexes have a reverse setting, Mickey told us. Blow out the flames with them. Once they were cleared enough, we ran past them. Luckily, the fog was still within range. Despite its struggles, we finally managed to trap it, dividing its body among our four containers. Repairs will take some time, but aside from that, you did a good job, Mickey told us. Now, let's get this fucker back in containment. He radioed Blue to inform him of our accomplishment. There was no answer. Blue! Blue, are you there? Only silence responded to him from his radio. Once again... I got a bad feeling. Mickey must have felt it as well because a hardened look came over his face. He gave us a nod and we began heading back upstairs. I think that's as good a place as any to stop. I'll make a quick bagel sandwich before winding down and I'll see y'all next time. Do you think that something like this will stay contained? Like this is just the end of it? Oh, we got it in the canister. It's all over. I am predicting that the fog will find its way out at some point. <laughs>
<laughs> it seems to be clever. It's definitely sentient, which I didn't expect from Fog. But yes, much smarter than we give it credit for. It managed to dodge the flames, for God's sake. It can fly around. This is definitely a terrifying creature. One, the likes of which I have never seen, much like many of the other creatures here. So it's either going to be a, a final battle against the fog or perhaps something even worse. What happened to Indefermist? Is he the one that's causing all of this even still? Huh, I guess we'll have to find out in the next episode. I hope that you enjoyed this one though, friends. If you did, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around. I do always appreciate that. In order to join us again, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. My advice as far as that goes is don't smoke. Mickey smokes. He seems like a big, strong man, but <laughs> smoking it just ain't good for you. You'll be stronger if you don't. So uh, I'd advise against it. But yes, I will see you in the next one, friends. Thank you, as always, for listening. And until then, my friends, uh, bye-bye.